Hi everybody, welcome back to Cancer to Marathon. This is our third episode um, of this My Story series where I'm telling my story about uh, my path from uh, the diagnosis of acute myeloid leukemia uh, in 2013 um, all the way through uh, my, my biggest win uh, which was running a marathon um, here at the end of 2019. Um, but more than anything, I'm wanting to go into great detail about my experience uh, with my cancer diagnosis, my treatment, um, and then the recovery from that, um, and some of the things that I've learned along the way. So if you haven't watched the two previous videos, there's an introduction video that we did as well as a video on the induction round of chemotherapy uh, that I had. So go back and watch those two if you haven't watched those yet. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about the consolidation rounds of my chemotherapy. So where we left off, I had gotten my prognosis um, after my induction round of chemotherapy. The number of, of blasts, which were the immature white blood cells um, that caused the leukemia in the first place, uh, were where they needed to be. They were low enough um, for me to be considered in clinical remission, meaning that um, I didn't have um, very many of them left in my bloodstream. That being said, they're always concerned about that coming back. And because after they had taken that bone marrow biopsy that we talked about the, at the end of the last episode, and I still had two mutations in my DNA, they were worried about my DNA producing those blasts again. And so um, there's a couple of different things that can happen at that point in time. Um, number one, um, they can have you do what are called consolidation rounds of chemotherapy, which are follow-up rounds of chemo uh, to try to reverse the mutations in your DNA. Um, the second thing that can potentially happen is that um, if they believe your case is severe enough, they can recommend, and by they I mean the doctors, can recommend a bone marrow transplant, a complete transplant. Um, that is a higher risk proposition. Um, there is something called host versus graph um, that uh, comes into play there where when they take bone marrow from a matching donor um, and put it into your body, uh, there is a chance that your body will reject uh, that bone marrow. Uh, and when that happens, um, that's not a good thing. Um, you can, you can kind of look up the percentages on that, but um, it's about a 20% rejection rate um, as of the time that I was going through the therapy, which is about six years ago. My doctors recommended um, that I do this consolidation chemotherapy. Basically what it was, it was, it was four additional rounds of chemotherapy and um, it, it was just cytarabine. So if you guys think about um, if you guys think about my induction round of chemotherapy, I had both cytarabine and idarubicin. Um, idarubicin was what caused me to lose my hair, things of that nature. So what ended up happening, I, you know, I'd mentioned uh, to you in the past that my doctor at Methodist Hospital in San Antonio um, coordinated with some doctors at uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, of course, world-renowned cancer team there, um, to come up with my therapy plan. What ended up happening was I would have my round of consolidation therapy. I'd be in the hospital for about seven to 10 days typically, and then they'd let me go home, and I'd go home and I'd come into the doctor's office once a day, once every two days, um, just to get uh, checked up on, um, see where my blood counts were at. They'd take a uh, blood draw out of my pick line and uh, see if I needed to start my transfusions yet. Uh, because again, the goal was kind of the same. They wanted to knock down my white blood cell counts, my immature white blood cell counts, and then make my body pro reproduce good white blood cells to replace the bad ones. And through that process, they're also hoping that the molecular uh, structure changes that those mutations go away. Um, so you're kind of trying to retrain your body. So basically what ended up happening was I ended up getting infections. Uh, it happened during the time that I was back in the hospital getting my uh, transfusions and uh, I would get C. difficile, uh, C. diff as they call it. And uh, that's not good when you're in the hospital and you've got C. diff. It's a, it can be a lethal uh, virus and it was scaring me more than the actual disease uh, itself was, than the actual AML was. And uh, so I became very uncomfortable with that. 
Um, I also got a, um, a blood infection at one point in time, uh, spiked really high fevers, um, a lot of anemia. Um, I had a situation where I was home uh, for a day or two and my nose started bleeding and uh, we couldn't get it to stop. And so I had to go to the emergency room in the middle of the night to have that dealt with. I ended up spending probably you know, 20 out of 30 days uh, every month in the hospital. And so each consolidation round took about a month for me uh, for my blood cells to go down. Uh, we'd deal with the infections, they'd rise back up again, um, and then I'd start another round once my levels hit a, a, certain, uh, a certain point. Um, so after the third round, I was pretty nervous about uh, the whole infection thing. Um, that had become a pretty serious situation. Um, it not only was making me not feel good, but I was worried about the fact that I didn't have anything in my body, no white blood cells to defend myself against it. And uh, so, um, and during this time also, they're giving me, uh, they're giving me a, a drug um, called Nupigen. And Nupigen is a shot that they give you um, to try to help your, your white blood cells rise a little bit quicker um, once you've hit your nadir. So you have to wait till you hit your nadir. You have to wait till all those cells have been killed off. And then they give you some Nupigen and that's kind of like miracle grow for your white blood cells. Once we got through the second round of consolidation therapy, you know, I had two, maybe three more rounds to go based on what the doctor was telling me. I decided I'd kind of had enough uh, battling the infections. And so I took a step back. I actually waited a couple of weeks uh, and I thought about what I wanted my next path to be, whether I wanted to continue on the path that we were you know, currently going down, if there was maybe a better alternative, if I should just stop the therapy altogether and kind of chance it. Um, and ultimately, um, I decided I wanted to go up and visit uh, MD Anderson myself um, in Houston, which is about three hours away from my home in San Antonio. Um, so uh, we went up to MD Anderson. They basically start from scratch when you get in to MD Anderson. They, uh, they go put you through all of their specific tests. They re-diagnose you just to make sure that your diagnosis uh, was spot on to begin with, which mine was. Um, obviously, they already had some records of what uh, I was doing because they were helping make the, uh, the plan, the treatment plan for me with my doctor down in San Antonio. And so I got, um, I got to visit with a doctor after I went through this whole battery of new tests, uh, including blood tests. Um, bone marrow biopsies, things like that. Um, and she recommended that they continue doing the consolidation therapy, um, but she wanted to add a new drug to the cocktail, if you will. Um, and that drug uh, was called fladerabine. And uh, so after talking to her, um, seeing what kind of situation I would have you know, every month as far as a living situation um, every month, uh, for the treatment, I decided to go to MD Anderson uh, for the rest of my consolidation therapy. And so basically what I was able to do was I was able to go to MD Anderson. Um, I'd go through, you know, the blood tests, the whole whole battery of tests, bone marrow biopsy every time I went. And um, then once uh, the doctor was able to confirm that everything looked good for me to start my next round, um, I would go down to their ambulatory treatment center, uh, the ATC, and I would get uh, some of my chemotherapy there, and then some of it they would send with me in a portable pump, and then I would just return the pump the next day. And I was staying at the Rotary House, um, which is a uh, kind of a hotel for cancer patients that's attached to MD Anderson. And so it made it very convenient. I was able to just walk across a breezeway every day to my doctor's appointments. Um, there were eateries in the Rotary House as well as MD, in MD Anderson. And uh, my, my dad, God bless him, he went with me uh, each time we stayed there and he would wipe down the entire room with uh, surgical grade um, bleach wipes. Um, so we made sure that you know, everything was completely clean, although I think the housekeepers did a, a phenomenal job of keeping it that way anyway. That was a little, a little extra uh, step that we took. So um, my first round of consolidation therapy uh, was with the uh, cytarabine and fladerabine, and 
immediately when my counts went down, I was able to tell the difference. Um, the counts went down a little faster and they stayed down uh, with the fladerabine. So even though I was getting, um, at this point in time, actually it was a new Lasta shot, which is like new but they only have to give it to you once. And I was happy about that. Um, even though I had gotten that, the uh, the counts were staying down and it was taking a while for them to climb back up. So I actually ended up, instead of about you know four weeks in between rounds of chemo, I ended up having more like five to five and a half weeks uh, between rounds of chemo uh, for my last two rounds. Um, but the great thing was with this new process that we came up with, with me being able to take that pump with me after I had gotten the, uh, the, initial, um, the initial chemo, uh, and taking it back with me to the Rotary House and basically just kind of hunkering down there, making that my safety bunker. Um, and anytime I left that room, I wore gloves, I wore a mask, uh, I did everything I could to help protect myself uh, from you know any germs that I might come into contact with. I didn't have uh, any infections the last two rounds of my chemotherapy. And it was phenomenal, I felt a lot better. Um, my doctor there was great. Um, I enjoyed kind of the freedom and, and even the exercise of being able to get up and really move around uh, MD Anderson. Um, most, of my, um, most of my treatment was on the same floor, but some of it I had to go to, to different floors. Um, and they just have everything there in house. So if they think they need to test you for something, they'll send you, you know, to go get an x-ray or to, you know, go get an MRI or, um, you know, blood, whatever the case might be. It's just all right there and it's very convenient. And uh, I was able to return home, um, usually for about five days or so between my chemo and when my cells started dropping and I hit my nadir and I needed to be there for the transfusions and, and things like that. But because I didn't have those viruses, um, those stays were a lot shorter. Uh, I was able to go home. I was able to spend time at my house with my family and uh, of course wait for those, those blood counts to climb back up. And I was able to have my blood counts checked on a regular basis at my doctor's office in San Antonio who then communicated that information uh, to my doctor uh, up at MD Anderson, my primary doctor up at MD Anderson. So at the end of my consolidation rounds of chemotherapy, I got four consolidation rounds in total. Uh, two of those happened uh, up at MD Anderson. And uh, then of course I had, that, uh, I had that induction round of chemotherapy as well. So five total rounds of chemo. Um, they did a bone marrow biopsy on me, again, as they did at the end of, of every round. And um, my mutation in my 16th genome had reversed itself, which was phenomenal news. Um, my 17th genome was still being stubborn, and, um, and it still had a mutation in it, and it, it, that still led the doctors to believe that I was at a little bit higher risk of the leukemia returning. And uh, so they didn't feel like I was necessarily a great candidate for a bone marrow transplant, but they had kind of given it their best shot with the chemo and we hadn't seen um, that 17th genome correct itself. And so uh, what the doctors at MD Anderson suggested was that I go on a maintenance chemotherapy program for about two years where I went into my local doctor's office um, and for three consecutive days, uh, they were going to give me a dose of a, a drug called the cytobine, which um, also goes by dacogen. And it's basically the therapy drug that uh, they would normally give to a little bit older uh, AML patients um, whose bodies maybe couldn't handle the, uh, the heavy chemo that, that mine could because I was 31. Um, and it was on kind of a clinical trial, this process. And what I found as I did research on this was that Ohio State University had actually done a very similar clinical trial several years before. And what they had found was that um, during the time that you were on this maintenance chemotherapy, you were probably not gonna have a relapse, which, which is great in itself. Um, but I was, looking, I was looking for a cure. I wanted to see that 17th genome you know, switched around and, um, and based on their research, um, that, that process um, didn't cause that to happen. So it wouldn't have lended necessarily to the desired result. So I decided to give my body a break instead. 
Um, I need to get my body in shape again so they can start fighting some of those free radicals uh, that form in your blood um, that cause these mutations, that cause many cancers. Um, I need to get my immune system built back up. Now, whether or not that could actually fix that 17th genome, you know, I had no idea. Um, but I knew for at least a couple months, that's what I wanted to do. I was still very overweight um, and I was just in bad shape after being beat up by all these drugs for, you know, the, the better part of six months. And so uh, I will talk to you a little bit more about what I experienced um, going that route um, in the next episode. I know we've covered a lot today with the consolidation chemotherapy and kind of what my experience was like there. Feel free, comment below, um, you know, ask questions. Um, certainly, I want to hear from you. You can email me at cancertomarathon at gmail.com if you'd rather have a, a private conversation. And uh, I'd be happy to respond to you and kind of let you know, um, you know, my experience and what I went through. So again, next episode, we'll go into, um, you know, post-chemotherapy, what I did there, and uh, ultimately what led to that 17th genome reversing itself and uh, having a complete molecular remission about a year later. Um, so we'll tackle that next time. Thank you guys, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.